I must clarify that I, um, I started this cohort with a neurologist, Dr. Valerie Boina, who has been instrumental in the clinical part. I'm more of a basic, basic scientist, and, and as such, I will present studies done with samples from the cohort and uh, that was uh, started in 2002. HIV uh, is neurotropic, as we can see, and it invades the nervous system early in the infection. However, HIV-associated dementia occurs during advanced HIV disease. The incidence of HAD has decreased with combined antiretroviral therapy. However, the prevalence of HAD is more than 50% and has not decreased with the therapy. HANS is still associated with increased morbidity and mortality. The typical features of HIV-associated dementia um, varies from cognitive impairment with memory problems, behavioral abnormalities, and motor dysfunction. Uh, but the spectrum of HIV-associated neurocognitive disorders uh, run from asymptomatic, mild neurocognitive disorder, and HIV-associated dementia. And the more prevalent are the mild uh, neurocognitive disorder due to the treatment with antiretroviral therapy. Uh, monocyte play a very important role in hand uh, as HIV-infected perivascular uh, macrophage accumulation occur by um, migration of monocyte, infected monocyte, in addition to virus that cross the blood-brain barrier early in the infection. And they differentiate into macrophage and release uh, viral protein inf inflammatory factors and also toxic proteins that uh, result in neuronal damage. It is important to understand, and uh, when we start this study, to develop uh, or find new biomarkers that to, to help to find uh, the progression toward cognitive impairment in HIV-infected patients early in disease so that, that the treatment could start earlier. So with this in mind, in 2002, when we started the Hispanic woman cohort, how do I go back? It has some time. Uh, in 2002, when we started the, uh, the patients, uh, we started with HIV-infected women because uh, women were not characterized as HIV-infected men by then. Most studies were done in men. So uh, we started with this cohort, and, and uh, uh, women were um, characterized for neuro neuropsychological and neurological testing, and samples of blood were taken every six months, and samples of CSF once a year. With the blood, we isolated uh, plasma that was stored at minus 80 degrees, and uh, PB and C that some of them were stored as uh, in liquid nitrogen for future studies of flow cytometry. And also, uh, PB and C were used for culture as monocyte-derived macrophages, as they are the representative cells that, um, that are in the brain that releasing these inflammatory factors. And also, the CSF was stored for um, future studies of proteomics. Many proteomic studies were published since 2002 uh, and using different samples from the women cohort. Among them, uh, 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 most of them point out to um, down regulation of, of um, antioxidant in monocyte and increase of, of pro-inflammatory cytokines and, and also um, enzymes that contribute to neurotox neurotoxicity. Uh, we studied the macrophages secretoma, the macrophage uh, lysate, the monocytes, and I'm going to summarize some of the data in this presentation. The first uh, studies were done using um, only a cell detox, which was initially the, the method that we have available to do proteomics. And this, um, since we were culturing the monocyte initially in wells, small wells, we didn't, have en we didn't have enough protein to do protein identification, and also the methods then were not as, as, as strong as they are today. So we did profiling, and we found differential profiles between uh, patients with normal cognition and patients with HAT. However, uh, we couldn't find uh, proteins that uh, profile that could be uh, both sensitive and specificity higher than 90%. So we switched to a uh, uh, method of gel electrophoresis, differential gel electrophoresis, from stored monocyte of the patient cohort. And from these studies, uh, using, uh, comparing monocyte from patient with cognitive impairment, normal cognitive impairment, to monocyte from patient with HIV-associated dementia, we found that most of the proteins that were identified using mass spectrometry were downregulated, as shown by negative numbers here, uh, but we were the cutoff 
of, of twofold change, only a few proteins were uh, further validated that most of them were antioxidants, such as thyro thyroredoxin, myeloperoxidase, and peroxy peroxyredoxin, that were decreased in monocytes from HIV-associated dementia compared to monocytes from patients with normal cognition. These were further validated by flow cytometry, and again, in black, we can see the histogram of HIV-associated dementia expression of SOD that was decreased, thyroredoxin that was decreased, and peroxyredoxin that was decreased, as shown here, significantly decreased in this bar graph. Further studies were also conducted using ELISA assays uh, on monocyte samples, uh, CSF samples, and plasma samples from a subgroup of patients. And again, uh, a study shows that uh, SOD was decreased in cognitive impairment starting with asymptomatic stage. So uh, again, SOD was decreased in monocyte, but not in plasma or CSF of patient. Parallel studies were conducted by our collaborators uh, using two dyes on the CSF. And uh, they found that several proteins were decreased, including cystatin C, which is a, a protein that has been decreased in some patients with Alzheimer's disease, and also uh, is the inhibitor of a neurotoxic protein called catepsin B. Other proteins were found, like clustering and gelsoin, that were uh, pursued by our collaborators. So we pursue uh, cystatin C and its inhibitor, I um, mean, and catepsin B. In the meantime, we also study, uh, again, started culturing uh, macrophages from patients prospectively, this time culturing in this big flask so we have enough proteins to do protein identification from the patients. So we apply a microwave and magnetic proteomic of macrophages on TMT labeling using a macrophage from patient with cognitive impairment. And again, the, this uh, subgroup of patients uh, came to uh, for neurological and neuropsychological testing, and with, they were, uh, uh, since not all the patients were with cognitive impairment, in, instead of having a, a whole bunch of patients, so we cite the, uh, we call the patient one month after testing to ensure that we have enough samples from each normal cognition group, asymptomatic group, and cognitive impaired. This patient uh, were on, the, on antiretroviral therapy as most of the cohort, but some patients were without antiretroviral therapy, and also some patients had control uh, HIV, others do not have control HIV, so we have all these variables. Even though we compare statistically and the cognitive function was not correlating with the uh, number of CD4 or the uh, HIV, um, the plasma viral load, or the therapy. Still, we proceed with doing the cultures of the macrophages, and after six, six days of, of seven days of culture, the um, macrophage uh, were cultured from PBNC adherent. The supernatants were removed and then uh, replaced with serum-free supernatant for store to uh, and stored and culture 24 hours. The supernatant was stored and the cell were lysed for uh, proteomic studies. Proteins were quantitized, quantitated, and the TMT label was proceed. And we found among 2,000 proteins that were identified, 28 that were differentially expressed between normal cognition, asymptomatic, and cognitive impaired. Among them, we can say that uh, several of them were um, related to glyc glycolysis, to the gly glycolytic pathway. Some of them were structural proteins and some of them were um, protein related to uh, protection, like such as uh, heat shock protein 70 and 90. And uh, these proteins were further uh, validated, uh, even though this is quantitative proteomic, which is a, a method that tells you the relative uh, uh, um, concentration of proteins uh, that are increased or decreased in each group. They were further, uh, they were statistically analyzed and showing these proteins that were glycolytic protein, heat shock protein, structured proteins, and validated by Western blood. And not all the proteins that were identified and quantitated by quantitative proteomic were validated by Western blood. Why? Because not all the antibodies available commercial, commercially detect the peptides that are detected by mass spec. Even though one of them, L-plastine, 
was validated by Western Bird as increasing cognitive impairment. Other uh, uh, were nearly uh, increased, but did not reach the uh, significant. L-plastin is a protein that uh, facilitates uh, lymphocyte migration, uh, attract lymphocyte in the presence of chemokines. With this in mind, and thinking about all the, 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 the data that was generated with proteomic, uh, my graduate, a graduate student in my laboratory, laboratory wanted to pursue a mechanism of one of the proteins that was interesting for us, catepsin B. Why? Because uh, we found that the monocytes and macrophage decrease antioxidants, that the antioxidants cause oxidative stress and, and disrupt the lysosomal function. And catepsin is a lysosomal protein in, important in antigen presentation and also has been reported uh, in the past in uh, some brain uh, immunohistochemistry as increased in patients with dementia. So we wanted to study, uh, and we found that also that in the CSF there was decreased inhibitor of catepsin. So we wanted to understand if catepsin was related to HIV neurotoxicity, and it other also validated this in samples from the cohort. So initially, macrophage were culture infected in vitro with the virus, and uh, we measured uh, the secreted catepsin B, the, uh, the mRNA of for catepsin B is inhibitor, and also neuro neuronal apoptosis. And this was published in PLOS One in 2012, and, and we found that indeed uh, in the mRNA of catepsin B increased at 12 days post-infection, the secretion also occurred from the macrophage at 12 days post-infection, and there's also increased activity at 12 days post-infection. When we look at by immunofluorescence to see if catepsin is within the lysosome or whether it's uh, released from the lysosome, we just two antibodies, one for lysosome, LAMB1, and one for catepsin, catepsin B. And we also use the method of, these are the controls, you know, showing the LAMB1 in green, staying in the lysosome, the catepsin B staying in the protein and antibody and the merge of both. When we use the technique called PLA, proximity ligator, shown assay for determining the proximity of two proteins together. Uh, in red, means positive, at three, six, and 12 days post-infection, I mean, in culture, on infected cells show red fluorescent, meaning that the catepsin is within the lysosome. And in HIV infected cells, we didn't see that. So the catepsin was not in the lysosome. And uh, that was interesting, that pointed toward our hypothesis. We also performed studies to determine whether catepsin was close to, to its inhibitor, cystatin B. And we did see that in the control, in the uninfected macrophage, but in HIV-infected macrophage, there was no interaction of catepsin with its inhibitor. So uh, this prompted us to then pursue further study to understand is the catepsin that is released from macrophages causing neurotoxicity. The neurotoxicity, is it due to catepsin or to viral proteins or others? So to do that, we have to collect the supernatant from HIV-infected and controlled macrophages and then add two neurons. So we culture neurons, added the supernatants, and then tested neuronal apoptosis by tonal acid. Um, green as, uh, fluorescent is positive, and uh, blue is, is a staining of the nuclei by DAPI. So uh, we can see here on infected, um, and neurons exposed to uninfected supernatant and six and 12 day post-infection, there is no apoptosis. Uh, HIV infected supernatant uh, uh, added two neurons in induced apoptosis that was um, reduced significantly with catepsin B antibodies. And also with an inhibitor of catepsin B, CA074. We can see here the statistics showing a six and 12 day positive infection and increase in HIV in, uh, supernatants added to catepsin to neurons, increase in apoptosis that was decreased with antibodies and with the inhibitor. So with this in mind, then we turn again back with sample from the Hispanic women cohort to see whether monocyte express increased levels of catepsin and cystatin. So monocyte where um, intracellular, intracellular staining of monocyte was performed, they were labeled uh, for CD14 for monocyte. Uh, this was from the PBNC that were storing liquid nitrogen. And then uh, 
We choose samples from normal cognition patients and from patients with HIV-associated uh, dementia. And we find that uh, in gray uh, is uh, catepsin in here and cystatin in here, that both were increased in patients with HIV-associated dementia, intracellular staining. And we are now pursuing further studies with this cohort with samples that have been stored to look at asymptomatic patients and not only a catepsin cystatin, but also antiosin and, and other proteins to see if we can determine uh, markers of early, uh, early um, cognitive impairment. When we look at plasma, we can see uh, that both HIV positive patients had higher catepsin than control, but there was no difference between had an ANI or had a normal cognition, but all HIV positive have higher catepsin in plasma. <coughs> Then other question that uh, came, came in the laboratory was, is catepsin complexing with other proteins and contributing to neuronal apoptosis? So for that, macrophages were cultured from normal donors infected in vitro, and then the supernatants were collected and immunoprecipitated with antibody against catepsin and using beads to uh, study then the proteins that are bound to catepsin by uh, mass spectrometry. And um, looking at the spectral count, this is kind of small, hard to read, but we can see here in red all the proteins that bind to catepsin in uninfected macrophages, and in green, the proteins that bind to catepsin in HIV-infected macrophage. And in searching for differential expression between both groups, we found that three of them in green here bind to catepsin in HIV-infected macrophage, but do not bind in uninfected. And among them, it was serum amyloid P component that was further validated and was statistically significantly increased as binding to cystatin B in, I mean, to catepsin B in uh, infected macrophages. So um, then we performed ELISAs to determine the concentration of this protein in a supernatant from HIV infected macrophage, and it was significantly increased in, in the procatepsin and the catepsin, but not the serum amyloid P component. So it's not a matter of concentration of the protein, but of binding, differential binding of the protein to the catepsin. Further studies uh, were performed using, uh, again, tunnel assays on, uh, on, infected, on neurons exposed to uninfected macrophage condition media and also uh, from HIV infected condition media showing here that HIV, you can see uh, the apoptosis, but this time using antibodies against catepsin, uh, inhibitor of catepsin, antibody against SAPC, and antibody of a combination of SAPC and catepsin to see the contribution of serum amyloid P component to inhibiting or promoting uh, uh, neurotoxicity. And we can see here with no treatment, there is increase in neurotoxicity upon exposure of HIV-infected macrophage condition media that is reduced with all of them, antibody against catepsin, antibodies against SAPC, and inhibitor of catepsin, meaning that the contribution of both proteins to uh, neurotoxicity. So in, in summary, we can see that after 12, uh, that, cat, you know, just to explain further, uh, catepsin is a cysteine protease of lysosomal origin, is constitutive expressed in all cells, function in intracellular protein turnover, is related to the activation of TNF and IL-1, which are pro-inflammatory cytokines, and it also participates in the cleavage of metalloproteinase inhibitor. We found from in vitro infected macrophage that there's decreased interaction of catepsin with its inhibitor upon HIV infection, that there's increase in mRNA and protein secretion of this enzyme, and in patients that there's increased expression in plasma of monocytes with had an HIV infected patient, and also there's a novel interaction that developed between catepsin and SAPC in HIV infected macrophage supernatant. So uh, with this in mind, and looking at the literature, uh, SAPC, which is with bind to catesting and contribute to neuronal apoptosis, happens to stabilize amyloid uh, beta peptides. 
while catepsin is a, also a beta secretase and contributes to the conversion of APP, amyloid precursor protein, to amyloid. And amyloid, a beta peptides are, are increased in Alzheimer's disease. And what happened in, in HIV? Early Alzheimer's. So we look at the brain, post-mortem brain tissue from hand patient from a, a national repository for the expression of SAP-PC, catepsin B, and amyloid beta. And to summarize, in the short time left, we see an increase in amyloid beta peptide, of course, in Alzheimer's disease, as seen in red, an increase in SAP-PC, an increase in catepsin B, but this is also seen in HIV-associated cognitive impairment, starting with asymptomatic stages. And we're starting uh, as a proof of concept using the mouse model that we heard yesterday, the HIV encephalitis mouse model, which is the severe combined immunodeficiency mouse that is injected with in, uh, in the brain with uh, macrophages that are either controlled or HIV infected to see how this uh, inhibitor of catepsin uh, can inhibit uh, whether a proof of concept is catepsin is increasing, is increasing apoptosis in vivo and whether these inhibitors and the antibody are decreasing the apoptosis. And when we look at the mouse brain, we can see that catepsin is increased in HIV-infected brain, and also the synaptophysin, which is a protein related to postsynaptic, is decreased compared to controls, to macrophage control. This is just initial studies, but in conclusion, I want to summarize we found that decreased antioxidant and increased catepsin B and cystatin B in monocyte from Hispanic Latino seropositive woman cohort with HAC. Current studies are in process to determine earlier hand stages for potential diagnosis and early therapy. And in monocyte derived macrophages isolated from HIV seropositive woman cohort, we found enzyme related, increased enzyme related to glucose metabolism, structural protein, heat shock protein, and catepsin B that were upregulated. And of those, the l plastin was validated by Western blood that is related to control the migration of T lymphocytes. Studies in vitro infection of macrophages with neuronal cultures reveal new mechanisms of catepsin B induced in neurotoxicity that I didn't have time to show you here, that this enzyme is both released in exosome and exosome pre-supernatant, and it in, is in penetrating into the neurons. So this is now on the revision. And in vivo animal models offer a potential to inhibit catepsin B and SAP-PC induce amyloid beta accumulation and neuronal damage. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>